Well, it's just gone at 10 past 12 on the 1st of November 2011. It is the first week of November that's now become synonymous with the running of the uh, Ready to Run sale. This year, 2011, will see the uh, fifth running of what has proved to be a runaway success. It is the sort of race that gives all trainers, big or small, a chance to be involved. And, of course, the prize money, that can't be ignored at 2 million rand. Well, it is an event that has had a lot of work go into it, and every year it seems to get better. And the driving forces behind it, while they're with me in the studio, Studio, first of all, it is uh, Mickey Goss uh, from Samuel Stud, the reigning breeders. And uh, with us is uh, sales manager of TBA, Caroline Simpson. Welcome to you both. Thank, Thank you, Cecil. So. Right, Lovely let's start with you, here. Mickey. It is, uh, goes without saying that this is a sale. In fact, the sale that we're going to touch on, which cover follows on the Sunday, has uh, proved to be a runaway success. If we look at the results of the uh, July, just last uh, year, this last July, first and second were purchased. Graduates 2008, 2009, Pierre Jordan and Igugu, running first and second in the uh, July. Well, it, it's what a great advert for the sale. And of course, uh, four Gauteng Guineas winners in the last three years, uh, in Bongi, uh, then Pierre Jordan and Fasani in, in a single year, and then of course, Igugu this last year. Uh, the top earners in the country the last two years, and in Bongi, the uh, Victor Adorum at the Dubai Racing Carnival in 2010. Here are the drums, winning most horse. There have been so many great graduates of the sale. Uh, and I suspect, looking at uh, both, at, at all the drafts in the sale, you've got just about every of one of the top studs uh, represented. Um, but looking at the draft, I think it's probably as deep as it's ever been, maybe deeper. Now, to all of the draft, Caroline, what sort of response did we get to the breeze-ups? You had a breeze-up at Summerhill Stud, and you had one on the high felt as well. Yes, we had a breeze-up at Turfentain on Wednesday the 12th. It was lovely. The, the race course was peak condition. Patrick and Lyle uh, helped me tremendously, and the horses worked perfectly. There really, I was very thrilled. We then went down on Thursday afternoon for the gallops at Summerhill on the Friday. Lovely success. It's just a lovely uh, build-up to the sale. You know, we had uh, Kip Elsa come out from America as our guest, and uh, he was a judge on the panel. We have all our regular uh, judges on the panel. They come back every year. It's like an excitement that we look to forward to every year. And every year we get better with the gallops. We started off rough 10, 12 years ago. But as the years go by, we've got better at it. And I mean, I hope to improve every year since. We uh, compress the gallops for the internet. It goes up on the internet. And all the DVDs go out all around the world and to everybody who wants to watch one in the, uh, the privacy of their own TV, of their own home. So it's become a, a winning formula. I think for the sale and uh, as the years go on we hope to get better and better at it. Absolutely. Now before we go to the event that precedes the sale that is on the Saturday at Turvin the Big T, mm -hmm. uh, just to touching on the uh, panelists you said it is a who's you of South African racing you've got the likes of Jahan Malherba you've got a uh, world-renowned trainer Mike de Kock, Joe Ramsden who else is part of that panel? Um, the, you know, the panel, you mean the panel the, that uh, choose the, the final field? No, no, the panel that were at the Breeze Ups. Oh, the panel, it's Mike de Kock, Michael Roberts, Kip Elsa, uh, Graham Hawkins, Joey Ramsden, Sean Terry, um, Dean Canamayer. I think that's uh, the lot, yes. Craig this, Peters, Craig is, the Peters is the chairman. Yes, so okay. they, they, they have a lot of banter between the two of them, and they all look for the... For the, for the right one. Okay, well, without further ado, the reason why we gathered here today is to witness the uh, barrier draw for the big race on Saturday. And uh, we've got uh, with us the very lovely ladies to help us, Gejo and uh, Naomi. They'll be helping us with the draw. But I think uh, traditionally the first draw will be for that uh, starting horse. But before we do that, a chance to have a look at the final field that will be facing up on Saturday. It is a field of 16 strong. There have been uh, two reserves, uh, on, there are two reserves on standby. And again, it is a mix, Mickey, just just going through that field quickly, we've got our first ever visitor from PE, uh, Yvette Bremner. Absolutely. And the first ever visitor from Cape Town, uh, Dean Kahneman, has Kenema. a live candidate in the race. So that's exciting. We've, we've been concerned to draw horses from the coastal areas. Of course, Durban already has chalked up two winners of this race. We know that, the first two winners of the race. That was Mark Dixon and, uh, and Mike, Mike Miller. Miller. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so to have uh, one from PE and one from Cape Town this year tells us that the thing, the momentum is growing. Yeah, absolutely. Now, without further ado, let's just now go to that first ever draw. That is the starting horse. We've got Caroline to do the honours for us. Naomi's got the box in hand. And uh, from <laughs> that uh, starting point, we will work down. If it's a 10, for instance, we'll go down 11, right down to the 16. 
It is number 12 and the first draw that is Kinematic Countess has seen to good effect that is uh, most recently at uh, the uh, Big Emerald Cup meeting when uh, Kinematic uh, Countess was a winner on that occasion. So that is draw number 12. That is horse number 12. That is the uh, first draw. So that will be number one. So now we, as I said a few moments ago we're going to work our way down. So the next one is number 13 as she's the club queen. Uh, let's draw that uh, next draw. Now we need the uh, blue box from now. We're going to draw all the other horses from the blue box shake it and then uh, give it to Caroline and we'll work from there next horse is uh, number one that is uh, number 13 that is she's a club queen a drawn at number one she's a club queen drawn at number one moving on to number 14 uh, that is sources of Anna once again if you could just shake it and then give it to Caroline Number 14, the Sorcy Savannah's drawn a draw number two, starting Stallgate two. That'll be Toro Appy and uh, Mike DeCock teaming up, of course. Mike DeCock, a strong hand in the race itself. Then let's go on uh, to number 15, uh, Countess Bacardi. This is a chance right for Randall Simons, Gavin Van Sale. Uh, it trains the Countess Bacardi once again. If we could just have a look at uh, what uh, draw number that is, uh, the 15, Countess Bacardi. That is draw number 17, uh, the uh, widest uh, draw, or second widest draw, when we consider that the reserves will also be in that box uh, for draws. Let's move on to number 16, Mo and Magic, a very good uh, recent maiden winner, Randall, rather, Ray Danielson for Sean Terry. Once again, if we could do the draw for number 16, uh, Mo and Magic. Number 16, Mo and Magic, has drawn a draw number 15, a starting store gate number 15. Now, we did mention the reserves, number 17, a blazing sunset from what is a very informed small yard, but certainly uh, producing the results that is Clinton Binder. Blazing sunset, let us uh, once again uh, draw and see what uh, the uh, reserve, potentially reserve, uh, has uh, drawn. Draw number five, that is Blazing Sunset. And then touching on Kumaran Naidu, who's runner number 18, a top talent. Let's touch on that draw number 18, a top talent. Starting store gate number six is where potentially top talent would be jumping from if getting into that final field for Saturday's big event. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, we're now going to go to the top and uh, the PE Raider blaze of fire. That is Santa Claus number one. Let's see what luck Yvette Bremner draws as far as uh, that draw for Saturday. That'll be Muzi Yeti teaming up with Yvette on Saturday on blaze of fire. That is starting store gate number 13. So that is the 13 for the one blaze of fire. Now a runner tipped by one or two fundies as uh, potentially the winner of this race this year. Frontino Gold, that is Santa Claus number two. Wai Shong Mowing for Mike DeCock. Let us see what uh, Santa Claus number two draws. That is Santa Claus number 16. That is Frontino Gold. That's Santa Claus number 16. Number 3, Verrocchio, Sean Terry, and uh, Robbie Fred. That would look to be the stable elect. Let's see what the three draws for Saturday's big race. That is a draw number 10 for the three, Verrocchio. Now, another Mike DeCock inmate is Dancilli Express. A stable jockey, Anthony Del Pesce, gets the ride. Let's go to uh, Santa Claus number 4. That is uh, draw 11. So far, Mike not uh, having the best of uh, runs in the draws. Now, another Raider from uh, KZN hoping to maintain the uh, tradition of them coming to upset, well, I say upset, but certainly uh, walk away with the uh, big prize is uh, Alison Wright's number five, uh, Penn Halligan, a winner of its maiden just two Sundays ago. Penn Halligan, that'll be Santa Claus number five. That is uh, draw number 14 for the uh, KZN Raider number 5, Penhaligan, to be ridden by uh, Brandon Larina. Now the 6, a cappella, Pierre Stratum and Brian Aweeda team up. That is Santa Claus number 6. That is uh, draw number 18, the widest of the, the draws. That is uh, a cappella. Now we were Speaking about the first ever Western K participant in this race, that is uh, Ad Admiral John Peter to be saddled by uh, Dean Kaname, and it is uh, Carl Nieses to ride the uh, seven Admiral John Peter.
Lovely draw. Draw number three, that is the uh, seven, Admiral John Peter. And then again, we uh, turn to Mike DeCock. He's got Red Barrel, Anton Marcus to ride. It is Mike DeCock with a very strong hand. Let's see what the eight, Red Barrel draws. A very good draw. Draw number six, or is that nine? That's that's nine. That is the nine. I believe that is a nine. <laughs> nine. <laughs> I guess you could excuse me for the pun. We're at sixes and sevens here. <laughs> now, another recent winner is from the Louis Hurston stable. That is the nine at Tony Stipple. Tony Stipple, what that does draw? What does that draw? Draw number seven for uh, Louis Hurston and Tony Stipple to be ridden by Chad Little. Number 10, Americana, Martinez, Mini, and Paul Matchett. The 10, just the three more horses to draw out. In fact, two more to draw out. The uh, 10. That is draw number eight. And then finally, the 11, extra zero, Donovan Mansour and uh, Sean Terry teaming up. Uh, what does that leave us? Number four, so that it completes the field uh, shortly. We shall be putting it up, but that is, uh, we did start off at the 12th, that was Kinematic Countess. Um, She's got a draw. We have got one more draw now. This is, uh, let's just have a look at uh, one more draw. That is the 12th, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> draw 12 for number 12, Kinematic uh, Countess. Where we actually started, that will be Gavin Larina and Roy Magna. So that is uh, your uh, field. It is uh, 16 runners that are uh, officially confirmed. And it is the two reserves, number 17, a blazing sunset. That is from the Clinton Binder stable. And another potential KwaZulu Natal Raider in the lineup that is top talent, provided that as a reserve gets in. So that is the uh, field. It is uh, the one, a blaze of fire. That is uh, drawn 13. Number two, Frontino Gold, drawn 16. The three of Orochio, Aussie Bread, that is the draw 10. Four Densili Express, 11. Five Penhaligon, 14. Six Acapella, 18. The seven Admiral John Peter, 3. The eight Red Barrel, 9. The nine Tony Stipple, draw 7. As we move on to the last half of that page, the uh, 10 Americana, drawn 8. The 11 Extra Zero, drawn 4. 12 kinematic countess, the 12 drawn 12. Then the pole draw is that the 13, as she's a club queen, that is Terry Lowe and uh, JP Fandom over. 14, as Saucy Savannah, that'll be drawn 2. 15, Countess Bacardi, the 17 draw. 16, Moe Magic, the 15. 17, a blazing sunset, draw 5. And 18, top talent, drawn six. So there you have it. That is your barrier draw completed for the uh, big race on Saturday. And, of course, it would be a miss of us not to uh, thank our ever-loyal sponsors. That is Empress Palace. That is uh, Empress Palace sponsors of the big race on Saturday. Now, we were talking off air, Mickey. We did discuss on the Kozulu Natal Raiders winning the first two, Mark Dixon, then Mike Miller. And then it was the uh, fabled uh, Gary Alexander's... Uh, Pierre Jordan. Jordan, and then of course uh, the winner last year was Hollywood Boulevard. Correct. So of those four, I think, uh, with no disrespect, I think the biggest stable won the latest. Yeah. But again, it just shows the level playing ground. It is the race open, and it is there to be won by anybody. The old saying: "There's yes. a horse for everyone at the ready to run." Absolutely. Is absolutely evident in this draw game today. Half the field today are come from what you might call the smaller stables. And I think that's the encouraging thing about this race is that for little money, you can get a run for two million rands. And, and I think uh, um, w we've seen some of those smaller yards have drawn quite well here as well. This is a very open race. It's a remarkably open race, uh, but particularly now that we've seen the draws. So we go into Saturday with, with a, an, an enormous amount of excitement. Um, and it goes to show if you've got a ticket in the sweep, anything can happen in your life. Now, it sounds a very obvious question, and I think I may just get my wrist slapped here. What has been the most, uh, uh, the lasting impression and the lasting memory for you so far in the last four years? I mean, obviously, one would say you, Gugu, but I'm sure there have been other memories. If you talk about the smaller players also getting a say. Well, of course, she never won. Yeah. So that's the first thing. That's why she ran Google. second this, to Hollywood correct, Boulevard. She that's was right. beaten by yeah. Hollywood Boulevard. So yeah. that in itself tells you how open this race can yeah. be. 
if you remember the betting last year, there was nothing inside 10 to 1. That's right. Uh, in fact, I think it was about 16 to 1 the field after yeah. those two. 1 to 3 was uh, Igu at one stage. It's correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think the critical thing here for us has been, firstly, two fillies, two cults. Yeah. Uh, the depth of the, of the outcomes and what those horses have done since, from the perspective of the entire field and the entire sale. Yeah. And what they've thrown up, I think, has been the, the obviously the most encouraging thing for us. But, Cecil, we've said all along also, yeah. the other adage about the ready-to-run is it must be fun. Yeah. yeah. And it is the most fun of all races in yeah. the country. The whole thing around it. This week, we've got people in town who are coming in from all over the country and all over the world. Yeah. We've got people flying in from the Democratic Republic of the Congo for of this course. race on Saturday. Yeah. And it tells you how magnetic it is. But, you know, if you want to see whether people are having fun, be in the parade ring. The buzz and the, the animation on the faces of the people who've got runners in that race and the cocktail party on the Friday night, they tell you everything. <laughs> so that great there. evening we have at Emperor's before uh, and all the people that turn up for it, you can feel it's a palpable buzz. And you know, Ronnie Napier uh, and Alec Costa, two previous chairmen of the Jockey Club, who've been everywhere in racing, were in the ring with us last year. And they said they'd scarcely known a buzz like that in racing at Turfentine in the last 20 years. And I think those guys know it, and that tells you most of what you need to know. Beautiful stuff. Unfortunately, the time is against us. Caroline, just uh, one word from you. As far as the uh, lots go, how many lots in total on Sunday? 185. On 185. Sunday. We started at 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. Uh, and we start off, we kick off the weekend at uh, Empress with a cocktail party at 7 o'clock on Friday night. Okay. And uh, we, uh, what is exciting for me is we have two new owners. I, I call them not new owners, but relatively John Jones and Andrew Papa Georgia with the runner in the field. For them, it will be most exciting. It's lovely having them. It's lovely to welcome them into the ready to run race ranks. Um, and it's lovely to, to see the people and the excitement they get out of it. Even if they know we pay out 10th place, that's another thing of the race, which I think is so um, comforting to people, is we pay out. To tenth place, so everybody gets something, you know, right up until the tenth place. Oh, so stuff. everybody's got something to, you know, even if you didn't come first, you came second or third. You've got a lot of money to look forward to. Absolutely, we look forward to the big race in Saturday. Mickey, a very last word from you, and just a sort of an indemnity type of question. Yeah. Tell us who are the panel involved in selecting the final fields, because we need to actually put that over. The the stakeholders invited the the uh, NHRA. Pumalela and Gold Circle, the racing operators, to appoint an official each to become the final panel who would adjudicate as to who would get invitations. So the NHRA appointed Roger Smith, Pumalela, Patrick Davis, and Gold Circle, Graham Hawkins. Uh, clearly, because Summerhill has been such a driving force behind the sale over the years, there's a misperception that we're involved in this. We have absolutely nothing to do with it. The day we start interfering with who gets invited to this race, and I think today is a good eye. There are only five Summerhill breads in the, in the field, and, mm. uh, and seven of them came out of our draft last year. So uh, from where we used to have 14 in the field, we're down to that many. But you've got to leave it to the experts. They've got an unenviable task. And this year particularly, the bottom end of this race was very crowded with aspirant runners who could easily have made the, the, the field. So they've got a very difficult task, but they, I think they've performed it very well. I think they've been as objective as they can. They'll get it right most times. Sometimes they'll get it wrong like anything else. When there's two million on the, on the, on the spiel there, there'll always be controversy. Controversy is not a bad thing, except when you're involved in it yourself and you want to try and duck these bullets. And I'm just keeping my head down as low as I can here, like all of us. Well, talk about ducking bullets. I think we have to uh, say goodbye now before we get fired by the production team. But uh, thank you so, so much uh, for our guest. It is uh, Mr. Mickey Goss from Summerhill Stand and of course, uh, a face of uh, racing in South Africa as far as the sales go. Caroline Simpson uh, does tireless work behind the scenes. Thank you so much to you both. Thanks. And of course, uh, we thank all our guests, our lovely friends, uh, Naomi and Kejo, and of course, uh, the Pumela, the staffers who were, were here to give us that final field that is uh, Cherise. And uh, of course, Candace, thanks very much to them. Thanks to the production crew. Thanks to you for watching us. We're going to go back to some live racing now as we cross over to the Teletrack Studios.